Hello, Long Beach Church Collective. My name is Daniel Long. I'm one of the lead pastors at Grace Long Beach, and here with me is Jeff Jensen. Uh, so we've been asked by Eric Marsh, who's been a friend of mine for quite a long time. We actually served on staff together at Grace. Uh, so I've known him for about 14 years, and Jeff, you've known him for a while too, right? 24, 25 years, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So he's asked us to have a conversation about telling stories and the importance and the value of telling stories, maybe even how to tell stories. And so that's why, Jeff, you're on here. So if you don't know Jeff Jensen, uh, Jeff Jensen is a writer. He's uh, been a pop culture journalist for Entertainment Weekly. Uh, he's also the author of two graphic novels. And most recently, Jeff, uh, you were uh, one of the writers for the HBO television show Watchmen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm sure that many people who are listening to this have seen that show, which is incredible. Um, so you know something about telling stories. Uh, allegedly, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess as I think about it, and, and I think one of the things that, that we've been tasked to do is to really talk to leaders, church leaders, and, and those who are attempting to, um, to really shepherd and lead in this time. Uh, and to consider the value of story. So I guess that's where we might start. And, and I guess that's a question for you is, given where we find ourselves in the middle of this pandemic, uh, quarantined, uh, trying to be uh, responsible, and so therefore not having large gatherings, but still trying to remain some sort of uh, some connected in some way. Um, I guess one of the questions is, what, like, what do you see or imagine the value of storytelling to be? Like, why tell stories now? What, 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 why do that? I mean, first and foremost, at a time when we're so disconnected from each other, I mean, I'm so thrilled today to be talking to you through Zoom uh, because I'm really kind of hungry for connection. And, um, and, and, and I'll take it any way I can right now. Right. So through screens is, is, is what we have to do right now. So storytelling is connecting at a time when we really need human connection the most. But I find I, I really crave stories right now from anyone and everyone about how they're living life, either well or, or are struggling. And what I have found is that these stories offer me a kind of the value of herd immunity, if you will. Um, I, I feel like that they strengthen us and offer strength in this time. Stories about how people are, are living well, how they're flourishing, how they're loving their neighbor how they're guiding their families through this. I, I need to hear those stories because I'm hungry for ideas on how to do it better on my block um, and with my kids. Um, but I also need to hear stories about struggle and failing too. Um, and I think that those stories are equally valuable because I, I, I am struggling. I am failing to, 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 to live well in this time. And so to be able to receive those stories from other people, I can offer empathy. I can offer just support and encouragement. And I, I need it too. And I kind of wonder if both of those kinds of stories, stories of success, stories of fail, failing, they kind of build and solidarity um, in, in this time in, in friendships, um, in families, in church bodies that will last us longer um, as we move through this and out of this. Um, just in general, what stories offer me is, there's one of my favorite verses in all of music is from the song Bittersweet Symphony, right? Uh, I, I need to hear some sounds that recognize the pain in me. And uh, I, I need that right now in a time of confusion, and fear, and uncertainty, and, 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 and experiencing my own limits. And in that kind of redirecting me toward greater dependency on God, um, which I find is the defining challenge of my spiritual life, um, the older and older I get. And to kind of just make maybe two more points, I just kind of wonder if telling stories, encouraging people in your congregation to, to give you their stories, collecting stories of this time um, will enrich in our, our, our religious practices moving forward. We, we celebrate so many seasons of waiting, you know, Advent, um, waiting from Good Friday to Easter. And in these, like, th these, these seasons of waiting, um, well, we're in a season of waiting right now where we are feeling 
most acutely, maybe more so than any other time in our lives, the, the waiting of, of, of a hope of deliverance from, from the, the dread that's outside our homes, um, uh, uh, the waiting for our lives to resume so we can earn a living again, to get back to connecting. Um, and I just kind of wonder, like I, I'm already looking ahead to like Christmas and going to church at Christmas and selling, celebrating Advent. And maybe that could be a place where we kind of reflect upon this time of waiting as we sort of rehearse the story of waiting for the greatest story ever told, you know, um, for light to shine in the darkness. Um, and finally, what I would say, Daniel, is that I think collecting, telling stories and collecting stories now is really important going forward because my gut tells me that this won't be the last time that we struggle through something like this mm -hmm. and that there will other be other calamities and catastrophes that either unite us all or are in, will experience in the micro in our lives, death, loss, and other ways. And, and there's good to be gained from this time right now. There's learning to be gained. There's richness to be had. There's, our, our values are sharpened and focused. We, we see more clearly here and the simplicity and struggle of our life, like kind of what's important. But I know from my own experience through hardship that like at times when, when my focus has been clarified like that, that it's, that it's easy to forget all of that stuff, all of the good, all of the things, uh, yeah, uh, the, to lose that clarity as I resume the busy busyness of my life and fall back on relying on my own agency to get through life and forget about God. Um, we need to collect these stories and remember these stories and tell these stories for the future too. So that's kind of my, my big thoughts about the importance of story and storytelling right now. Absolutely, and it connects with me because I think one of the, you know, one of the tasks of the, of the pastor is to help one see, and maybe that one means the church, help one see how their story connects to the larger story that God is telling. I mean, I think of the Flannery O'Connor quote, right, where she, she says, somewhere is better than anywhere, mm -hmm. which is this sense that, that God is at work now. It's, it's not this, this nebulous, overarching thing, but it's in, our, in the smallness, like in the quarantined realities of our lives where God yeah. is at work. And so how do, we, how do we help not only ourselves, but also people and others um, see God because that's where God that's where God's reveals himself in right. in in the stuff of life like in your your life in my life in our life together and oh go ahead oh yeah what what you one one of uh, many things that you said there that really resonates with me is um man the, the Bible is super alive to me right now because I just think of so many stories from the Bible that uh, make a whole lot more sense to me now <laughs> and bring it to life you know um we're here and we're, we're, we're counting down the days to Easter as we record this, um, but we're also now in Passover. And here we are quarantined in our homes and not to be dramatic about it, but I'm going to be dramatic about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, here we are in our homes with an angel of death outside our doors, afflicting our community. And, um, and I, I have hope, you know, mm -hmm. I have hope of the blood of the lamb that I'm going to, you know, be, you know, that offers eternal hope, but that doesn't mean that it's any less dreadful or my heart breaks for what's happening or I have, don't have fear. That story really resonates with me right now. Um, um, but all other stories of people that are, you know, the, the Bible is just, yeah, it's very alive for me right now. And one of the things that, that you know, you and I have actually talked about, and, and, uh, it's, and I don't know if it's so much confusing as it almost seems impossible which is here we are in the, in the middle of a story that doesn't have an end yet. Yes. Uh, and, and so how do we, and how do you think about telling our stories mm -hmm. where there's a beginning um, and there's, we're not really in the middle. There's only a beginning at this point uh, and, and, so, and waiting for the end. So what do you think that looks like? Like what is it like thinking about the bones of a good story sure. in particular in our present? How would you, yeah, how would you think about that? I think there are many different kinds of stories that we could tell over the course of this crisis. Um, but maybe I think that maybe there's only a couple kinds of stories that maybe we can tell right now. 
um, just in general, what I would say is I'm trying to write stories for a living right now. And it's really hard to tell a story right now. Um, I'm writing a story right now for work um, that deals with some contemporary themes of what we're going on. And, I, and just when I think that I'm on top of what's going on right now, I, I, something happens in our, in, in, in our society, some new, some new thing that happens. And like, I, I realized that what I wrote two days ago is completely irrelevant. Um, I think we can relate to that in many different ways. Storytelling is hard right now. The stories that I think that make a lot of sense right now are stories of, of lament. Um, and stories that, at least for the, for, for the Christian, that just kind of cries out to God about, uh, about, about who he is, that he exists, what, what my complaint is, whether it's <laughs> the limits of me as a teacher, as I'm homeschooling my kids, the limits of technology. Uh, fun fact, this is our second time trying to record this video. Um, our internet cut out mm -hmm, the first that's time. Right. Um, I lament. Um, and then I, I place my trust in him uh, and, and, and I pray for, for deliverance and I try to praise him in this time. I think that uh, I'm not a poet, so I will never write a lament in verse, but I think that that kind of structure for, for us is a good storytelling structure as we chuck stories back and mm -hmm. forth with each other about what it's like to love our families, love our neighbors, uh, lament our limitations. I, I think that what I would encourage uh, pastors to do is, is that in terms of like collecting stories is that just encouraging people to think about the idea that they are living in a story mm -hmm. um, and to collect the raw data and brainstorming of the story and think of themselves living um, in a story that has three chapters of, of, of orientation, of disorientation, and then reorientation. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, we are kind of stuck in this protracted middle uh, or maybe protracted middle of disorientation mm -hmm. right now. You know, our ordinary world, what it was seems lost to us right now. We are now in the middle of a story um, in which um, we are disoriented and trying to figure out our world. And then hopefully we return back to normal, but with some kind of learning gained mm -hmm. that can, that makes our lives richer. That's a classic three act structure of most every story. There's a lots of variations of it. Um, and I would encourage people to think about the idea that they are in the midst of that second act of disorientation um, and think and reflect on where they came from and then look forward to the third act um, but wondering how it can be better and different. So what I'm getting at is right now, stories of lament feel, uh, uh, and, and, and lament, Daniel, that doesn't not always have to be sad and tragic. Mm -hmm. They can be comical. Most of my days, the stories that I feel like I'm collecting are stories that are just the folly of my own heroic agency mm -hmm. in life. And they're funny, you know, like failures with my kids, failures with loving my, my neighbors, um, uh, uh, just the awkwardness of that. Um, so lament with comedy, lament with sorrow, but then think about how we're living out a story so that we can tell those stories when, we're, when we get better perspective and clarity on our situation and gather those stories. I imagine churches and congregations collecting a book of their stories their own psalms and lamentations, if you will, for, uh, uh, for the future. Communities doing that. That might be a little bit ambitious, but that's you know, a, a fanciful thought that I have right now with a lot of time on my hands. No, I love that because it makes me think of you know, one of the most dark psalms is Psalm 88, where there's no turn of, the, where in a lot of laments, you, know, you go through and it's kind of narrating the experience and the disorientation, but there's always like a little hopeful turn at the end. And there is no hopeful turn in Psalm 88. And so for some of us, I think we feel like we're living in a Psalm 88 world at this yeah. point. But um, I think that despair happens when we forget we're living within a story and we forget that there is a God to whom we can just start speaking, right? Yeah. Start, and, and I think that is the, that's where the hope in and of itself is. Uh, yeah. and, and so I think one thing I wonder if you've had any thoughts about what 
and I love the idea of collecting stories now for the future, um, but do you have any other thoughts of how we might share those stories in the present? Like what, what are, how might we, if we are gathering stories, what might it look like to, to I guess, help people share their stories, but then also um, share those stories with the broader communities that we find ourselves in? In terms of getting the stories um, from the people that you're leading and pastoring, I would just lead out with it, you know? Um, I wanna hear your stories, Daniel. I wanna hear you like as, as someone who's, who's pastoring me, um, and, and you do a great job of this, um, but like being vulnerable with who you are um, and sharing what's just going on in your struggles and your successes and lead out by just sharing your stories. That invites whenever my elders, whenever my pastors just are, 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 are opening up and being vulnerable um, with me, that just inspires me to give it right back. Um, maybe that only works with me, um, but I, I only have me to, to, to share. Um, like sometimes I experience like specific questions as invasive, um, but that might work for some people. Mm -hmm. um, I think it works with my kids, some of my kids, um, but oftentimes what I find in leading my own kids is when I start telling them stories of what a screw up dad was <laughs> um, when he was a kid, I start getting something from them. Yeah. So that's how I would get the stories how to share them with each other. I mean, that's going to be a comfort level issue with whoever is, uh, whoever is telling the story. Right. But like, I, I, I build communities through zoom if possible. It's an awkward thing for me, but I'm getting used to it. Um, um, and I think that we have all of these tools that are now coming online for storytelling, whether they're podcasts or social media, this is a great redemptive use of social media. Social media can be so destructive and toxic, but what if we use this as an opportunity to be more vulnerable and, man, I'm struggling with each other, uh, struggling and use that as a storytelling for that platform, for that kind of storytelling. So like, you know, uh, maybe I should be challenged to think less about posting that angry political post on Facebook and share uh, more of my, this is how it's working or not working for me in quarantine. Um, so yeah, like encouraging people to share, be open with themselves. I, I've experienced a tremendous amount of connection on my social media platforms when I'm just sharing about who I am um, and not in any prescriptive or dogmatic way. Um, uh, but you know, maybe churches can create social media platforms or internet or create Zoom communities uh, for sharing stories. Um, and, and, and I think that, again, I would kind of return to kind of the idea that I'm in love with is uh, collecting stories to be shared at a later time when we can actually be together yeah. um, and, and worship together again. Um, I, I can't wait to, yeah, worship with, with people at Grace and, and maybe hear their stories being shared uh, with, with all of us in our small groups or, or in service together. Um, I, I think that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking about. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate that. And I, and I do hope that we, um, as, as people in Long Beach, as people who are bearing witness to the presence and the love of God, I, I do hope that we become people who, who learn how to tell stories, collect them, um, and share them with each other. So Jeff, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, and for yeah, just being willing to share with us. And I guess Greater Church in Long Beach, uh, just want to again encourage you to consider this as an opportunity uh, to help both people recognize their story um, but perhaps more importantly recognize um, the god who is involved um, in their story as well and thanks again to eric marsh uh, for the invitation to do this we hope it's helpful and um, peace be with you yeah thank you